And now I'm in Las Vegas, and I love minor league baseball. And the uh, the Mets AAA team used to be here, but now it's the A's AAA team, the Las Vegas Aviators. I would have loved to have gone to a game while the, the uh, week while we're here, but um, you know, have to be a, a, another time, I guess. And do you think? With the way college football, that's cut up in the air. Yeah, the NFL draft happened, but the Saints already announced that they're not having any off-season workouts. And with the way high school baseball and all that stuff ended, how do you even see baseball, whether it's MLB that leads the charge, where do you see the next kind of wave of baseball even, like what steps they take next? I have... I have no idea, and I, and I don't know if, if anyone really knows because, yeah. um, you know, there's going to be a second wave of this virus when they reopen um, the, the country within some of these states like Kentucky and Georgia and Tennessee and Florida because people aren't being responsible. You're seeing protests in Missouri and Pennsylvania and, and those states I just mentioned, and uh, – um, there's going to be a second wave of this because people aren't following rules. The, the longer the state people of Texas, don't, oh, 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 Florida, right? There's another. Yeah, there's as as long as people don't obey the rules and don't listen to what they're being told, the longer that it's just going to prolong this thing. And uh, you know, so I don't know if anyone really knows if you know if they could start the baseball season May fifteenth and then have to shut it down again july 1st or something uh my gut feeling is that the baseball season we'll, we'll see half of the baseball season and it'll start when the all-star break should have ended um that's my gut feeling that's what i said kind of from the start yeah uh and um as far as the nba and uh, nhl goes i don't think they should resume the season just whenever they start just we're 67 70 games in whatever you know de- you know depending on the teams right yeah um just start so you know who the top eight are sorry for that number nine team who's you know half a percentage point behind the number eight team um <laughs> but <laughs> you know, just uh just hold the playoffs um just, we don't need the NBA and NHL playoffs going into August when they're going to have training camps starting up in September. Yeah, I think um, I think that's the and, hardest part with those leagues is because they were already underway. So it's just a fat asterisk on it all. You know, MLB and, right, and, and, and NFL can look, I'm from still Wisconsin. Strong. I'm from Wisconsin, and I used to live in St. Louis. Um, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I'm kind of pissed about those seasons because the Bucks, yeah, are the best team in the NBA, Facts. and man, they could be robbed an opportunity to win their first title since 1971 before any of us were born. Yep. And the Blues are the defending Stanley Cup champs, and they're the, they got the top record in the Western Conference, so they're you know they're poised to repeat uh, to defend their championship. Yeah. And you know this is being taken away, but. Uh, as a Blues fan, I'll say that if the 2020, if the rest of the 2020 season it's canceled, at least the Blues get another year as the Stanley Cup champ. <laughs> How many people uh, can say that? But and you know that's another thing that does with the baseball season. It's another thing that really doesn't make any sense about the Red Sox uh, punishment because all right, so some guys were banned for the 2020 season. What if there is no 2020 season? Is that going to be expanded <laughs> to 2021? Or are these guys just getting a free freaking pass? Um, that's true. So, and I, I really want to swear leave that right up now to the lawyers because that's how much it upsets me. Honestly, though, that's what were you going to say? Oh no, that's um, yeah. Now that I really think about it, like, shouldn't that suspend all those suspensions just be indefinite? And not, oh, just for the season? Like, that's kind of the lazy way out now. Now they're going to probably countersue MLB once this is over. Yeah, and then you look at the, the contracts of some of these guys. I don't know if they're going to have an accrued season. Mm. Or, you know, like, like a, a guy like Mookie Betts. 
His yeah. contract's up after the 2020 year. The, the Red Sox just traded him to the Dodgers. Is Mookie Betts ever going to play for the Dodgers? Mm. Um, you know, we don't know. Well, Trout and collect it's, that it's, check. It's, it's, it's so weird because from what I've read, uh, Betts will get credit and the other players will get credit for an accrued season in 2020, even if there is no season played on the field. So that could mean Betts could walk away from the Dodgers and, you know, I don't know, sign with the Yankees in 2021. Who knows? I, I will say the Dodgers do have the money to pay him. So it, it, this this whole thing is unprecedented. It's weird. I can't believe we had a March without March Madness. Um, and it's just, you know. For me, it just feels weird, like, moving on to the NFL draft without any sort of closure of NBA or, like you said, March Madness. Right. Like, just. Yeah, and. You know, one thing you, you mentioned, like the uh, team, the off season and, and camps that NFL teams usually hold in May and June, those aren't going to happen. Yeah, that who, who that's who that's really going to hurt are the undrafted guys. Yep. Uh, a lot of the guys we saw together in Pasadena. Yep. Um, the XFL guys trying to hang on. Even, even well, yeah. Even if those guys get in, in a normal year get invited to a rookie mini camp on a tryout basis, that opportunity to show teams is gone. Yep. And I, I actually wrote about this on my, my website, Round Clement Sports, and I, I spoke with a, a Yale guard um, who has an awesome backstory, by the way. He's from South Africa and started playing football six years ago. Um, had never watched football before in his life until he was 16 years old and he watched a Notre Dame-Stanford game and fell in love with the game. Wow. Uh, but uh, um, uh, it was uh, uh, Dieter Eisland. He, I just remember he was at the NFL PA Bowl. Um, I, I talked to uh, South Dakota State running back Mikey Daniel, who's making a transition to fullback, and um, Chauncey Haney from North Greenville, a, a D2 school. He was at the NFL PA Bowl. And uh, who was the other guy I talked to? Um I, I talked to the agents of Christian Wil- Wilkerson from um, Southeast Missouri State, who had a really good performance against Jeremy Chin from mm. SIU. Uh, I'm drawing a uh, 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 Nick Nick Wheeler from Colgate is the other guy uh, defensive end. That's the other guy who I talked to. So you know these guys, a lot of them would have been lucky to get drafted at, the, at you know in the sixth seventh round, but they, they needed to show you know uh, show well at a pro day or. You know, um, just or have have the opportunity to do team visits. Uh, so you know that that's gone. And uh, when these guys don't, if these guys don't get drafted, which is likely now, um, they don't have another opportunity to really show teams what they can do at at a rookie mini camp or just during uh, OTAs or anything like that. It's a shame because uh, it's not like this twenty twenty undrafted class is going to really have another opportunity in 2021 because then you just got a, a new crop of uh yep. draft prospects and so and and the- it's uh I, I i really really feel for the um you know those fringe draft prospects who are you know are, are ranked by draft next you know between 250 and 350 you know because there's uh it's really un- unfortunate and and they could literally be missing out on on thousands of dollars and to your point even even just getting that mini camp like making that first impression that that pays off because it is such a small industry that you don't know what assistant coaches are going to be able to advocate for you for at another team even if it isn't right at that team in that mini camp so it's like like you said like they're going to lose out on hundreds of thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars for their career practice squad guys Practice squad guys make around ninety thousand a year. Yep. Um, All right. So it, it with the first round just officially ended right now. So Clyde Edwards Hilaire was the last pick. Who who's a top the first running back taken? I know that was. You know what? If, if you gave me a list of five running backs who would be the first running back taken, I don't. I think... don't think I would have him on that list. It'd be Swift. It'd be Taylor. Uh, Dobbins. Um, the, uh, Dobbins, yeah, that's where I would start. Um, so for uh, I, I like him, the LSU running back, but uh, 
Yeah, I, I think Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in the draft class, and I thought he'd go first. Not just that, but I think Swift and, I think and, Swift would have been the better, you know, kind of change of pace gadget guy. Taylor would just be able to handle inside runs, and he's a home run hitter. But I think – Did you watch Wisconsin? Taylor? Did, it, it, heck, he ran a, what, a 4-3-7 yep. or whatever? 4 Yep. Same 40 as Taylor, uh, Simmons. Taylor is a home run hitter. Taylor is a do-it-all back. Yep. And I love I love Jonathan Taylor. And that offense, because they pass so much, it would have been perfect for him, honestly, and because they, they had an excuse not to pay uh, Damian Williams. But so who's there. who else is on the top of your board that's still left for the second round and third round? Bengals. On I'll the go top. with a, another Wisconsin guy, Zach Bond. Uh, mm, yeah, definitely. That's who I wanted to. That's who I wanted the Packers to take at twenty or at, at thirty, because um, uh, you would. You would have thought the Packers would have learned from their T.J. Watt mistake in 2017 when they were sitting there at 29 and Watt was on the board until the Packers traded back to the second round to take Kevin King at 33 and T.J. Watt goes 30 to the Steelers. Um, but, uh, uh, the uh, Penn State linebacker, Yetter Gross Matos, uh, yep. Xavier McKinney from Alabama, Christian Fulton, uh, Grant, I, Grant Delpit was once considered like a top 10 pick. Yep. He's still Crazy. on the board, I, I believe. Uh, Ross Blacklock from TCU, Trayvon Diggs, another Alabama guy. AJ Epinesa, AJ Epinesa from Iowa is a monster. Um, we mentioned Swift and then Denzel Mims. I'm pretty. I don't think he got picked here while we've been talking. Ezra Cleveland. Uh, huh? Ezra Cleveland out of Boise State. Oh yeah, yeah. Ezra Cleveland is another one. You know, apparently all the. Uh, the tackles who were selected ahead of him, teams just thought they were better than Ezra. Yep. Yeah, because, I mean, you went to Boise State, and there's kind of that stigma with a lot of their left <sighs> tackles. You young guys, you didn't get my 90s uh, alternative rock band reference there, did you? <laughs> well, no, run it back. Run it back. <laughs> <laughs> better, there was... <laughs> better than Ezra is the name of a band. I'm Googling that when I get home. I just want you to know that. And I'm talking about it next week. Uh, we're going to come into that song. We're going to come into one of their songs next week. Yeah. This week will be Fred the Godson, R.I.P. Next week. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I dropped a pun and it was wasted. I feel uh, like that's what was happening in the, in the press box. Like, a lot of great jokes were being said. And because, like, someone was mad about there being no cookies, we just kind of, like, all glossed over it. <laughs> All right, Ron. So, so my last question for you is, you know, obviously you you go deep in football, you go deep in baseball. So, you know, what what does that passion and and love from sports come from for you, and why is it important for you to to be so passionate and strong in ver- multiple sports? All right. So I'm I'm 45 years old, and I'm from Wisconsin. I grew up in a dairy farm in Wisconsin. So Sundays were, um, you know the well, heck, in Wisconsin in the fall and winter, it gets cold, you know, so you yeah. don't go outside much. But uh, Sundays were the day where, you know, when you come home from church, it's noon because this is central time zone, right? Yep. You get home from church about 11 or so, you start making lunch, and you turn the Packers game on at noon. That was mm. my childhood. Um, the Packers were horrible. <laughs> um, but I had a number 12 Win Dickey jersey when I was mm. a kid. Uh, I, I told Aaron Rodgers that a few years ago that I had a, a number 12 jersey when I was a kid. And, and he's like, and, and then I told him it was Lynn Dickey. And he goes, he goes, oh, okay. I was wondering how old you are. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a phone interview, so he, he couldn't see me. But, but anyway. Um, uh, That's a good idea. But when I was eight, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. But when, when, I, when I was eight years old, uh, the Brewers went to the World Series, and uh, I mean, I so I really I just fell in love with baseball there, um, with Paul Molitor and Robin Yount and mm-hmm. Cecil Cooper and Ben Ogilvy and Gorman Thomas and Ted Simmons and Pete Bukovich, R- Raleigh Thinkers, uh, you know. So that's really and n- 1982 is when uh so the the 81 baseball season was abbreviated by a, a strike, mm. and uh, so. I really didn't pay much attention to baseball until 1982. Mm. And then, I mean, with the Brewers going to the World Series, and then 
losing to the Cardinals broke my little heart, but <laughs> I, I, I love the group. 